Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Gibson. Today is the Master Builder Show. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am president of Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, a registered builder in the state of Texas, and a graduate master builder certified by the National Association of Home Builders. I'm also a member of the National, uh, the National Association of Home Builders Research Council. Today's topics are window insulating panels, and we're going to be discussing some cabinets later on. My guests today are Sam Corey and, and Ken Crooks with Advantage Window Systems. Uh, Rodney Bishop will be here with Artistic Cabinets, and Mike Davis with MH, MHD Construction. How are you all this morning? Fine, you? Oh, we're doing rosy here. So far, so good. Morning, Jim. Hey, Mac, how are you? How was, how was your week? Busy. Busy? Yeah. You still roofing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I figured you would after a hailstorm. Yeah, there's but, uh, a lot of roofs out there damaged. If y'all, worse, gonna, if y'all got any wells. Yeah, I know it. I know we had it come through our place, and it hit a lot of people mm-hmm. pretty bad, and then some people didn't touch at all. Yeah, it's just a wave. Yeah. If y'all <laughs> Two or three miles wide. <laughs> If y'all have any questions out there for us, y'all can call us on 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. And to check out any builders or remodelers before you hire them, go to my website, which is www.masterbuildershow.com. That's www.masterbuildershow.com. It will take you to my main page, and you can click on TRCC. You can go to their website and pull up the builder by name or by registration number. And check out, make sure he's registered. And uh, we're going to be talking about ins- uh, window insulating panels today. And they're actually a solar panel, I guess, solar screen. Uh, magnetic and reversible. Yeah, a magnetic and reversible. Well, how do they work? Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, what we basically do is build a uh, insulating panel. And uh, what we do is we build a, a dead airspace around the, your existing window. And we come about two inches out away from the glass, and we put up a uh, aluminum frame, and then we put a magnet on that, and then we have a, uh, a panel that's custom built just for your uh, window there, and then we have it fit where it's silver on one side, bronze on the other, and it's basically made out of uh, mylar. One side is a silverized aluminum, mm-hmm. and the other side is a carbon graphite BV- PVC b- deposit. And uh, that's what it's made out of. And then what they do is they take the material and they put it together and heat it. And that's how it's put together. And then we perforate it so you can see through it. And then we put a clear coat on the bronze side there so no air can pass through it. Okay. So we're building you a dead air space. And the the benefit of this is, is the silver side faces outside uh, and it reflects about 70% of the heat in UVs. Mm-hmm. Actually, about 92% of the UVs and about 70% of the heat. So we had stopped the solar gain by about 70%. Yeah, I was reading a bunch of information on your website there, and uh, you can take uh, a single glazed window and make it perform like some of your more expensive windows, correct? That is correct. What are we looking at uh, as far as uh, when we contact you, uh, you're going to come out, you're going to measure all the windows. That's correct. How long from time did I contact you to get them installed? Uh, About 14 days typically. 14 days. Uh, you're telling me it, it'll block out 70% of the solar of, gain. Of the solar gain. What about radiating heat? Uh, we, we address all four issues of what you really have in a uh, cause of have a, you know, solar is we stop the radiation, convection, and humidity. And uh, one of the main things is, is you're stopping all that heat. Mm-hmm. Coming through, and then you also it also acts as a solar collector when you reverse the screen in the winter time, if it ever gets cold in Texas again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, you can uh, t- take this solar screen and it, it magnetically attaches, so we build you a complete dead airspace, so you can reverse it, and it becomes a solar collector. And a four by four window will actually generate as much as a, a six hundred uh, watt electric heater. What uh, What about uh, how long? How Good. Do they stay on there? I guess if in, in high wind, like oh, do you, have you tested up in high winds, like they'll, sixty, seventy mile an hour wind? They'll hold a sixty mile an hour wind. Sixty mile an hour wind. So if you get above sixty, you're going to blow off. Uh, that's a possibility, but they have held lower. <laughs> have they? Well, we it, tested the um, now. It's it's magnet to magnet. Cause I know you got no, it. it's magnet to steel. We have a steel frame, which is the inflector. Uh, 
gets screen. Rolled. Yeah, it's what it's rolled into. Okay, into a steel frame, just like a regular window frame, but it's steel. How long have, have this been developed? Uh, actually, it was developed in 1983, and then Vantage Window Systems. Uh, we actually put a team of uh, stockholders together and went to Canada and purchased this company in '99, April '99, and then we moved it to Alito. Yeah, this is the first I've ever heard of it. I just got an email, uh, I guess, from you or uh, it's from one of my partners, the president of the company. Yeah. And and where are you located? We're located in Alito, uh, right yeah. off of. Uh, we're in 11255 Highway 80. Highway 80. Mm-hmm. What what are we looking at in cost wise? Typically, it can be anywhere from twenty to twenty-seven dollars a square foot installed. Twenty to twenty-seven dollars a square foot. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Mac, you got any questions for him? Yes, uh, I noticed I've been going out, and a lot of screens are damaged, even heavy-duty screens from the hail. What kind of resistance would it have against that? Uh, quite a bit, because it only goes on the inside of your home, so I'd have to knock out your window to, to basically and damage the material. Oh, this goes on the inside. Yes, sir. It doesn't go on the outside oh, like a roof. Okay. It goes on the inside. Okay. The interior mounted frame. That's what we would build you a dead airspace right in front of your window. Okay. From the inside. And that way you don't have the problems that you have with solar screens getting dirty and and you know, causing you a lot of difficulty there. Right. Okay. So they're uh, yeah, that that makes a like, that makes like a difference. Solar yeah. panels they mask the actual okay, the solar solar panels actually mask the cut-up windows or your design windows Mm -hmm. to where this goes on the inside. So your aesthetic value of your window that you purchase will still be a value outside of the house or looking from the outside in. You'll still see the design windows where solar screens actually mask that. What about if, what about if you've got uh, like eyebrows on the window with arched windows and stuff like that? Can you all match that? We can. The uh, what about color selection? Uh, well, you carry it right now in white and bronze. White and bronze. So, uh, can you paint them? Ah, uh, you could. You just paint the frames. Mm-hmm. These yeah. are powder coated painted though. So right, right. It'd be not not really wise to paint them. And if right. you, if you want us to, what we could do. What we could do is basically have the powder coaters paint them for you, but it's an upcharge to do that. Right. So we don't have to worry about hail. What no, else we need no, to worry it, about? Uh, just the aesthetics, I guess, of it and some historic homes, yeah. That's uh, one of the main benefits of this product is is because uh, it's textured on one side on the silver side, mm-hmm. so it disperses the heat a lot faster. And what you won't feel any heat on you at all coming through the window. It's an amazing product as far as saving you energy. It will save you up to about 40% of what you spend on utilities year-round. Yeah, I, I was talking to your president there, and he's located down in Austin, San Antonio. San Antonio. Uh, now, the, the, he said they, they were doing some kind of uh, upgrade or, or something on some historic buildings down there, and the one reason they went with those was because that uh, – they it, they were historic, oh, yeah, and they yeah. couldn't really so change the design. This was kind of an addition on the interior mm-hmm. that didn't uh, change the look of it from the outside. How, how much can you change on the inside of a historic building? Or, or is that a... Via the state, you know, you're supposed to... They go to a certain date, and you match everything to that date. Now, I don't know what... Uh, I don't know if it's for interior and exterior of a window, but it's... It, I, I think it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Yeah. I would think you yeah, You can you use a thicker pane window and stuff. Get back to the period. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you, I think, yeah, I, I, I can't remember if there's any restrictions on the interior or not. I know you can't change the face. I mean, like the courthouses, yeah, there, there were restrictions. I mean, it had to be period. Okay, all the way through. Yeah. Wow. I think they have lifted some of that now, though, because of the energy crunch. It would make sense, but... Who knows it? <laughs> All right, we've got, we're coming up on our first break here. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. 
YourCircleOfWealth.com. A recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.yourcircleofwealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. That's yourcircleofwealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties with a selection of interior and exterior lighting fixtures. They also have ceiling fans, mirrors, and vanities in all sizes. A lighting consultant will help you with your decisions. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320 or the website is fortworthlighting.com. 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. North Texas Basements, 817-770-2768, with over 30 years of experience in residential construction. Add extra living area, storm protection, an extra room that will be easy to heat and cool without needing a large piece of ground to build on. Think about having a basement in your next home. North Texas Basements, 817-770-BSMT or 817-770-2768. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Sam Corey and Ken Crooks with Advantage uh, Window Systems. And right now, Mac Davis is here with us with MHD Construction. We're talking about uh, window insulating panels. Tell me a little bit about how it was developed or how it came about. Well, actually, actually, it was developed by one of the big three car manufacturers, one of the inventors for those, had invented this as a skylight uh, or a headliner for a car. And then they found out that they could really use this as a, a window insulator instead. And so they actually, the first ones were actually sewn on with Velcro. Okay. They, they sewed it on with loop Velcro, and then you bit, built wooden frames around the window and uh, then you put stapled hook Velcro to that, and then you had the panels made to size, and then you just rolled them out, and then you had weather stripping around before you got to the hook Velcro, and it, you just zipped it right up. How easy are they to clean? I mean, uh, They're real easy to clean. Uh, the bronze side, you just want to use a mild detergent on that if, when you go to clean it, but they don't get very dirty. Um, and the, the side that's silver, it's it's porous on one side there so what you have to do is not put any water on that you just use a soft bristle brush and and vacuum it can you, you can vacuum it if you don't have anything real strong i noticed uh what did texas a&m did some research on it yes sir we had that done uh i think in 2004 they did the research on that uh how can people go to and look at this product um basically if you'll give us a call we come out to your house and measure and and what i like to do is is kind of put up a panel and let you live with it for a week or so let you see touch feel Mm -hmm. and see how well it works well uh, you've got a website though that they can go to and yes sir uh, and look at the product yes it's www.inflectorpanel.net and you spell that i-n-f as in frank l-e-c-t-o-r all lowercase no spaces and from there they can go to the texas a&m right research and uh we have that test on there all right uh what else do i need to know about this panel i mean uh, basically the thing you need to know is it's going to make your home more comfortable than anything else it, it makes it so comfortable your home you really enjoy it a lot more because you don't have those rooms that are too hot or too cold anymore mm-hmm. the comfort level what you experience is really wonderful and then you'll save money they pay for themselves typically in three years and uh you save a lot of money on your electric bill until you get into the electric company. Well, we, we, we try to preach energy efficiency here, and that's uh, our pretty well our main topic is green building, energy efficient homes, 
And so anything we can do. So say on a typical home, uh, what are, what are people looking at as far as the cost? Uh, a typical home that maybe has three by five windows and, uh, you're looking at maybe like 16 windows, maybe, uh, that'd be about 3,200. 3500 right in that area, depending on how we install your windows. You can do a flush mount, which is a little bit cheaper, or you can do an inset mount, which looks a little bit nicer. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're talking about uh, if you got a couple of hundred dollar a month uh, electric bill, you're going to save 40%? Yeah, up to 40%. Up to it 40%. depends on some people. We have some people that saved as much as 66%. Well, that's what I tell people. You know, I can't guarantee their electric bill because I don't know how much they're going to run their lights or what kind of lights they've got and, and what their habits are. But uh, to get fresh air, do you have to just remove one? You can. Okay. Uh, what you could do a lot of times with people that like to open their windows a lot, mm-hmm. what we'll do is put two panels there instead of one, and then they can just pull the bottom one off and let the air flow through. Okay. And these uh, typically will, uh, when you go to pull those off, that that you know they just pop off real easily and, and put them back in place easily. It's like a uh, refrigerator door that has a magnet right. around right. it. It's on the same principle. The other uh, advantage to this is it also gives you security in the daytime because whenever you look at it, you can't see through it. From, right. the, from the outside. From, from the, the outside. Exterior. It's on the same order as uh, the buses you see with advertisements on it. You can see the advertisement, but once you're inside the bus, you look clearly outside. Okay, and it also uh, like tinting. I mean, it's like yeah, it's like a one-way mirror. <laughs> All right, Mac, got any other questions for him? Is well, you said there are other color options, but it's an upgrade. It is. The, the, the frame is the only color we're talking about. We're not talking about the panel itself or the material itself, because that's kind of a locked-in. Yeah, it is. And uh, one thing good about this product, we do do it in roller blinds now for people that want to make it disappear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, and you don't lose that much more uh, by using the roller blinds as far as energy consumption. Uh, but what's, what's really good about the product is the panels work better than the, than the roller shades, but you're not. it's about 5% difference. What, uh, y'all measured actually the insulating value of these? Um, it, it was done in Canada uh, on the R factor, and what they the government had done it because we have these in all their buildings up in Canada, right? And uh, we have it in all their embassies around the world, and uh, basically it comes to about a twelve R with a with a panel in front of the window. R twelve. Mm-hmm. The deeper the windows, does it help that, uh, that airspace? It does up to one point now. If, after four inches, it's not going to make much difference. Okay. okay, I didn't know if like a block wall where you're, you know, getting 16, 18 inches deep, mm-hmm. it would make a lot of difference. It, it doesn't as far as I found out what happens is it's actually a see-through radiant barrier is basically what this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for you, it will reflect all the heat in the UVs right back out the window is a big plus. What about uh, moisture? Uh, uh, you know how you see windows that condensate right. in the wintertime? This addresses that problem, too. You won't have any more windows condensating. Eliminates? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Makes sense, yeah, because the heat's not actually getting to the backside of the window. Well, actually, what you have is that dead air space built up, mm-hmm. and so uh, you're not getting, say, like the heat from your house and then the cold meeting each other. All right, we've got to take another break. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you looking for a law firm with an understanding of the construction industry? Kelly M. Davis and Associates experience includes home inspections, construction contracts, disputes with builders, and helping subcontractors or vendors that have not been paid for their services. For more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972-434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. 
Kelly M. Davis and Associates. Principal offices are located in Louisville, Texas. Alamo Appliance, 100 South Riverside Drive in Fort Worth, has been dedicated to serving your needs in kitchen appliances for over 35 years. They offer Gen Air, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and many others. Their experienced sales staff will help you make the right decisions at the right time. That's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Once again, that's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Fort Worth Lighting, serving Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties with a selection of interior and exterior lighting fixtures. They also have ceiling fans, mirrors, and vanities in all sizes. A lighting consultant will help you with your decisions. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320 or the website is fortworthlighting.com. 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Sam Corey and Ken Crooks with Advantage Window Systems, and Rod D. Bishop has joined us with Artistic Cabinets. I guess that's still the name of your company, isn't it? Yes, Artistic Cabinets Trim and Millwork. Where are you located? 1310 Apache Court, Joshua, Texas. Joshua, Texas. All right. Mike Davis had to leave us here for a few minutes. I think he had to make some phone calls. We're going to be talking about cabinets, I think, on this later section. Do you all have anything else you want to tell us on your uh, window insulators as far as uh, any other technical details? or? Well, uh best thing I can tell you is, is if you got humidity issues uh, on your home where you have windows that uh, perspire, in the wintertime, we can uh, address that issue. You won't have that problem anymore because we build you that dead air space, and, and you don't have the cold meeting the heat. All right. Uh, on cabinets now, uh, people take cabinets real seriously now. They're, I mean, they're building cabinets like furniture. I mean, more and more people want, uh, I mean, we're spending so much money in our kitchens. We, we, we allow about 30%, 35% of all the money that goes into a house into a kitchen. And I mean, they're putting feet on them. They're uh, what? What? What trends are you seeing, Rodney? As far as what you're building now? Basically, um, you see radius corners. You see which are rope, um, flute, bead, different styles. There's also uh, paneled radius corners. Um, as far as the feet go, you would see uh, basically ball and claw, French Gothic, Queen Anne, uh, bun feet. Uh, pretty much anything. Um, it's like windows. Um, there's all sorts of types and varieties. Are you seeing more people want to paint the cabinets or mostly stained or, or what? Still mostly stained. You'll see a lot of uh, maple cabinets which have a smoother look. Um, you don't see grain quite as much as you used to. Um, people tend to mix a little bit. Uh, you'll see it on the islands. You'll see uh, them being painted or distressed or something to be a little bit different than the rest of the uh, kitchen. What's the most popular wood that you use? Probably maple. Uh, if you went back five years ago, I would probably say ash, oak. Um, but in the last uh, probably three, four years, I would say more maple and knotty alder and paint grade. What's the most popular style? Um, there's a huge variety. On your uh, middle to high-end uh, homes, I would say probably the, the fancier, a little bit fancier cabinets with the feet and the Radius corners, you'll see those a lot more paneled ends. Do they have like Victorian style, Shaker style, Art and Craft style, like they do on regular furniture? Oh, sure. And then um, you, you see all sorts of types, and, and you, you'll see flat panel plane uh, cabinets and that are maybe dressed up with uh, like a Shaker type foot or that that type of thing. What uh, on, on? I know you you can build cabinets out of everything because i think i've used it for the last seven or eight years but uh uh, what's the cost difference like on on painted cabinets versus stained cabinets 
Well, typically it's all based on the wood. The um, it, Usually maple and hickory run about the same. Sometimes cherry wood's a little bit above that. Cherry can get uh, more expensive. Below that you have um, oak and knotty alder, which is about, usually it runs about 3% less. And then below that you have ash, which is about 3% less than um, oak or uh, knotty alder. And then paint grade's uh, even cheaper than the uh, ash. Well, uh, your paint grade, uh, you know, when you're building paint grade, normally you're using what, particle board or MDF or what? Well, usually it depends on the builder, but a lot of times it's still going to be uh, birch plywood and that type of thing. Um, but then as far as the doors, the doors are usually made out of a paint grade maple or a poplar. Oh, they're still? And, they're still wood. Okay. Uh, now, you can do an MDF uh, and a particle board, which it's even cheaper. Um, a lot of people don't prefer to go th- with that because it, um, it it doesn't hold up as well. Right, to the moisture problems? Yes. Especially if your humidity is higher than 50. Well, you're supposed to maintain about 50% humidity in your home anyway for uh, comfortable living and uh, to reduce bacteria growth and mold and stuff like that. Uh, if I'm going to get in touch with you to build a cabinet, like I say, I, I call you, how can they reach you? Um, 817-300-1341. Um, email, uh, it's really amazing over the last years. One thing that started really changing us, a lot of people email uh, PDF files, and we do estimates right off PDF files. So, and so in a simple email is rodney.bishop at att.net. The, uh, when they're staining, uh, they want a particular color for wood. Are, are there any woods in particular that take stain better or... I mean, if I want light-colored cabinets, what kind of wood am I looking at? Well, basically, ash and uh, maple tend to be a white wood, and they're they're pretty light. Um, Naughty alder is more, it, they actually call it red alder if you look at it. it. It tends to have, it's more brown, but it has a little bit of reddish look. And then, obviously, red oak it has the reddish look. Um, if you're going to go with light colors and light stains, if you don't like a red look, you don't want to use red oak because it'll the red pinkish hue will show through the uh, lighter stains. But... Uh, I, I think that's the biggest variety um, as far as the, the colors. Lightness is um, something you really got to watch if uh, if you don't like certain things like the red hue. Is there any problem with, the, like, in medium colors? No. All of them, you can pretty much get, when you get into the mediums or even darker, you can pretty much line all the uh, woods up that are stain grade and, and pretty much get the same color if you go to a Sherwin-Williams or a, a, that type of uh, any paint store. Uh, if you go to a Home Depot or Lowe's, they usually won't have a, uh, uh, they usually won't tint stains for you, especially oil based stains. What, uh, what kind of maintenance, uh, difference do you have in like, uh, paint, paint versus stain type cabinets? Well, obviously the advantage of paint is, is if you, um, you know, somebody scratches it or something, if you have a matching paint, you can lightly sand it and, uh, touch it up and nobody sees it. It's a little more difficult with the stain, but even with that, it's, uh, you know, the scratches could still be touched up where you basically can't see them. Um, however, I, I really think that the uh, the stain that's covered with lacquers or polyurethanes, uh, they hold up really well. So I, I don't, we don't hear very many uh, things about, you know, problems with them not holding up. Well, you know, I, I, most, I, I don't think uh, we put in, I don't know how many cabinets, but anyway, I think all of ours have been stained grade, and I have uh, yet to, to even know anybody that's even scratched them. Uh, you know, you're opening a cabinet door and closing a cabinet door, and you really don't have any obstructions around to bang against unless you've designed them wrong. Sure, <laughs> that, that makes total sense. I, we hardly ever see any. What uh, on on? I know we put in mostly full extension drawers. Tell us about some of your hardware. I mean, as far as uh, the difference in full extension drawers, what options do we have? And I know they got some self-closing type uh, railings and stuff like that now. Basically, the different types are you have um, you have your epoxy uh, coated drawer glides, which are your cheaper end ones. Um, they're the white ones. They're usually almond colored, and usually they have a little roller at the front of. Uh, and the back, and that's about it. And they're usually rated for around 75 pounds, even though I doubt very seriously they would hold 75 pounds. That, but that's what they are rated for. Um, then you have your full, and those open up three quarters of the way. The drawer will come out three quarters. Yeah, and I always hated that because you know everything that you you forget you've got is always in the very back of the drawer, and you can't really see it without taking the drawer out. 
Well, we, we've got where we're going pretty much with full extensions on everything because they, they come out all the way. They're rated at a heavier weight, usually 100, 125 pounds, and occasionally 100, 150 pounds. They have full ball bearings. They're greased. They're much smoother. Um, and then the other type that's been out for a while is the undermount drawer glide, which it does. It's a self-closing. Not all undermounts are self-closing, but most of them are, and, and you'll shut them. As you shut them, when they get toward the back, they, they they have a little shock system, basically, and then they slowly close so they're not slammed. And it actually probably helps the drawer hold up, I guess, a longer period of time, even though I've never really seen any drawers come apart, even with the other type of drawer glides. The uh, what really uh, is there? A, how much cost difference are we looking at? Like from the low end to the to the high end on the on the drawer, drawer glides? Depends on the brand, but basically, if you're looking at uh, Low-end drawer glides uh, versus a full extension, you, you, typically speaking, you're talking about $5 a pair uh, or a drawer more, uh, maybe $8, uh, just depending on the brand. When you get into the uh, undermount drawer glides, which are the self-closing, those can really range uh, anywhere from 15 to $55 a pair. And so the, the cost really jumps because uh, you're talking probably at least another $10, $15 uh, minimum, depending on the brand. And, and brands really make a big difference because it's just like windows or so many different um, tires on cars or whatever. It, it can really make a huge difference depending on the brand. I know we build a lot of, well, 90% of our homes we build are, are for 50s plus crowd, and, and they're usually last time home buyers. And uh, I know we don't put in we put in very few doors anymore in the lower cabinet sections, you know, except under the sink, I guess, where they're pretty well. That's all you've got an option to do because of plumbing. But uh, we put in all the full extension drawers. Do you see that coming with most people, or, or do you see that not uncommon? I would say you see more pull-out shelves probably than actual drawers. They like to open up the, the doors and then the pull-out shelves uh, roll out, which is basically a drawer without a drawer front on it. A uh, little bit different way of it's just a different look basically. It function functionally, it does the same thing, but um, it, that's typically what we're seeing more. Uh, but yes, people definitely as they get older, they don't want to bend down. They don't. Um, it, it's it's easier to access the back of the cabinet. Um, so yes, m- most anything, whether it's a drawer or pull out shelf, they're, they're going. More people are going to those. Is there more cost to uh, pull out drawers uh, versus the pull out shelves? You know, basically, there's not. I mean, if you look, if you think about a drawer stack, it has, say it has three drawers in it, and um, so it would have three drawer fronts. And usually, the top drawer uh, would be a slab, and the two bottom ones would be raised panel. Well, if you went to a pull-out shelf, then you basically are talking two raised panel doors and a slab drawer front. So really, there's no difference in the um, in the, cost. the amount. What about uh, what are the new? Uh, I know they're coming out with some a pop-up type. Do you do any of the pop-up type? Uh, like if they want to put a toaster down, and, and I, I've seen these kind of in the future houses, you know, type deal where uh, appliances pop up out of the cabinet. I know they've got what they call the uh, appliance garages and stuff like this. Do you, do you sure. do a lot of those? Um, we do quite a few appliance garages. You don't really see the – they have appliance lifts. They have the pop-ups. Um, I would say most people don't do that, um, but – it depends um, on how much they actually cook because I think a lot of people have their kitchens. Uh, I'm not sure how much people actually cook. The ones that do cook a lot, they're the ones that tend to have the things like the appliance lift and, and that type of thing because they don't want to be pulling their KitchenAid mixer or whatever right. out yeah. because they're heavy. Yeah, because of the weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mac, you got any problems? No. Uh, yeah, I was thinking usually it's just the ones that really cook a lot that won't need that mixer on the lift. Do you see a lot of your uh, upper end clients liking cherry lately? Um, over anything? I mean, I would say they don't really? for one reason: cost. Because um, you can pretty much, depending on the look you want, but you can pretty much get a look that's very similar to cherry. If you uh, either have a good stain guy or you use us, you can get a very similar look. For usually about ten or fifteen percent less, and that's a, that can be a really huge savings depending on the total cost of the cabinet. My track. last two clients, they just they had to have the cherry look, you know, with not much color to it at all. 
Now, if you if they are if they are those type of clients who are interested in uh, like a clear uh, more of a clear finish to get that true cherry look, mm-hmm. yes, they almost always have to go with cherry. And in that case, yes, they, it's it's almost not even an option. They'll just do it. And, and my guy that's building them, he loved it because he's that's great working with cherry. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Cher- <laughs> cherry's a nice wood. Yeah. What about your hinges and stuff like that? Uh, are most of your hinges are hidden? Almost always. Once in a while, we get a more of a shaker or a mission style cabinet that somebody wants some exposed um, hinges. But typically, they're European style um, hinge. Um, that they do have a removable feature, and there's all sorts of brands again. But there's buttons and little clips and stuff. But they're basically a clip-on hinge, and then the painters love them. And then uh, you know, if you ever had to remove one for some reason, take it down to the store to match a color. Or, Something like that. You just basically mash two little buttons, the thing clips yeah. off, and then it clips right back on. But that's typically the hinges. One of the new things coming out in hinges, uh, and it's been out for a while, and it's re- it's a really nice function, is if uh, in the, just like the undermount drawer glides that are self-closing, they've come out with a hinge that does the same thing, and it basically closes. Uh, you, you should go to shut the door, and you just give it a little push, and then you know it goes to a certain point, and then it just slowly closes real easily. It keeps you from slamming the cabinet. Um, yes, you, it does, and, and it's also just a very nice feature because you, mm-hmm. you basically give it a little push and you know it shuts itself. What are we talking about in cost wise? It's really amazing those things. Uh, I mean, you're only talking a couple dollars more per set. Per it, set. Per set. It's really you know you would think uh, it would be a lot higher, but it, yeah. it, so far with the prices I've seen, it's not. So you're talking about two dollars per door? Yes, usually. That's it's pretty cheap. Yeah, that, that'd be well worth it. Sure. Uh, I noticed I put the. Uh, Self closers on some of the undermounts as an upgrade after they were in. You just buy the extra piece and it just snaps right on. It was so easy. If you had the right undermount from this cabinet company, yeah. To, to start with, yeah. yeah. Sometimes that um, there's a lot of different things that go into drawers because you can have dovetail drawers or just dado drawers or even simpler drawers. And sometimes, depending on the company, the brand, um, there's certain specs and widths, and, and with drawers, it's really, really critical uh, because if they're even off, you know, a 32nd or 16th, right. they don't, they, they're they too tight, they're too loose. And so the, most of them, it, you, they have their specs, and you, it's really nice to know going in front, uh, up front, what you're going to do. Looks like we've got to take another break here. We'll be back here in a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you looking for a law firm with an understanding of the construction industry? Kelly M. Davis & Associates' experience includes home inspections, construction contracts, disputes with builders, and helping subcontractors or vendors that have not been paid for their services. For more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972-434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. Kelly M. Davis and Associates. Principal offices are located in Louisville, Texas. Croft Foam Insulation and Protective Coatings has over 25 years of experience in the spray foam business, serving residential, commercial, and industrial clients. Croft Foam specializes in open and closed cell polyurethane foam applications to construction, refrigerated trailers, and even castles. Croft Foam is a Fort Worth-based company. You may reach them by calling 817-482-1664 or email at foamman at swbell dot net. Alamo Appliance, 100 South Riverside Drive in Fort Worth, has been dedicated to serving your needs in kitchen appliances for over 35 years. They offer Gen Air, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and many others. Their experienced sales staff will help you make the right decisions at the right time. That's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Once again, that's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. 
Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Sam Corey and Ken Crooks with, with uh, Advantage Window Systems, Rodney Bishop with Artistic Cabinets and Millwork, and Mac Davis with MHD Construction. And we're talking about cabinets today. And during the break, we were talking about, uh, I guess, some staining and some yellowing. And uh, what all were you all talking about over there? Uh, basically, I was telling him a problem that, that my girlfriend had a house built 20 years ago, and she's got these cabinets that are pretty large, and they got the self-closing hinges like he was talking about. But I was going to do some trim work, as a matter of fact, putting inflectors up in her, in her kitchen there, and uh, we were going to match the framework there and uh, by building her cornice boards to go over it. And uh, built the cornice boards, was going to stain it, and couldn't match the stain. And it was because it had a little bit too much yellow in it. And uh, so I went around trying to find all the stain, and I was just asking uh, Mr. Bishop here what we could do about that. Well, basically the problem was, it, it sounds like, is what I've seen in the past, is that um, lacquer, uh, especially houses built 20, 30 years ago, they didn't use white water lacquers, which um, don't yellow over time. And probably the color was from the, the, the yellowing was from that. And uh, you can have, you can tint, um, you don't want to use it as a final coat, but you can tint some lacquers if you need to. Um, if you're having a really hard time, um, but you really need a professional to apply it uh, when you get into that because it can start looking really blotchy and inconsistent if you're not careful. What about bleaching? Uh, I know a lot of people like a lot of sunlight in their kitchens and stuff like that. Is there a problem uh, with the sunlight shining on the cabinets? No, no, you know, probably direct sunlight outside, uh, I would say, over time, yes. But as far as inside, I've never, uh, as long as they have... Um, you know, one coat of uh, sander sealer, which is basically a type of lacquer, and then a, t- a couple coats of lacquer or polyurethane, so it, it, whichever way you go. Um, I've never seen a problem with bleaching, it, you know, as, as far as just uh, through a skylight or something like that, as long as those final coats were applied appropriately. Mike, you had something to say about that? Yeah, better. when you got that yellow problem, I've had that before too, and I've just I've ended up actually using an amber shellac, and it comes real close it, on some things. I mean... That's not the answer for all of it, that's for sure. That makes sense because uh, it's that now, yellow look. Yeah. Do you give uh, clients option on doors more than just the standard eyebrow top or square? Sure. I had one that was wanting a gothic door design. Well, the biggest. And a lot of them wouldn't do it. The biggest thing I found is when people tell you names, uh, they'll tell you, you know, I want a gothic door, or I want this or that. Um, I have people, I think probably the most common thing is they'll tell me they want a uh, country look or a um, French look. Those are two that are, I've heard those terms. And it, what it's really critical because that's kind of subjective to find out, okay, show me some pictures or draw me, yeah. or here, I'll show you some pictures uh, or I'll show you a job, you know, that's already done or something like that or uh, some cabinets because uh, when somebody says gothic, you know, but pretty much any type of style it can be, especially if, like y'all were talking earlier in the show about historical homes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Anything can pretty much be matched. Um, once in a while, I see something that's really difficult, but for the most part, I think any shape style, um, it really comes down more to the the shaper cutter heads and and that and the uh, templates than it does anything. I mean, yeah, my guy had to build his own template to make a tall pointed arch like this, and then just literally do them by hand and. There was four or five cabinet people that wouldn't even touch it. They said, no, we can't do that. Well, they probably could, but they probably weren't comfortable and, and didn't know how to price it or something. Right. Like it was too so, time-consuming for them, so they just yeah. wanted the the easy stuff. Sure. And, and that's you know that's interesting uh, thought because one of the things I go back and forth in my mind in the company is, um, okay, do we – on custom, you, you really get out of manufacturing. When you're not right. – the, the further away you get from custom cabinets, the closer you get to true manufacturing – 
So there's kind of a um, – sometimes I think it's difficult for owners or managers or um, shop people to decide which way they're going. And if they're not careful, if they price it out as a manufacturing type of thing but it's more custom, yeah. um, they can really get hurt on it. Yeah, because she brought us all kinds of clippings and, <laughs> you know, from magazines and stuff throughout the years. And, and that's great because, I mean, it, did. it makes it easier to – you can see a picture. I mean, that's, they say, this is what I want. Usually mm-hmm. you can replicate it. So, Yeah, I noticed, uh, you know, all, all of our houses are, are pretty well custom, even my spec. So you come out and you have to measure and, you're, and all the cabinets are custom built to fit that particular house and won't go in any other house. Uh, what, so explain to us the difference between manufactured cabinets and custom cabinets. Well, um, my experience is, is that basically the two types, it, it, the manufacturer versus custom, is uh, in a sense everything's manufactured. But in another sense, uh, uh, really I think that the, the underlying thing is is that there's the two styles of cabinets you typically uh, see, and mo- I think most people don't recognize You have a frameless cabinet, uh, which is more of the European style, uh, and then you have a face frame cabinet. The face frame cabinet usually is a little bit stronger. Um, It has the wood, uh, usually two inch and a half, two inch, two and a half inch wood that surrounds the front of the box that the that is the cabinet, because all cabinets are basically a box with some doors or drawers in them. Right. on frameless cabinets, you don't have that wood. Basically, the front of it is edge banded, so you basically have a three quarter inch strip down each side. And 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 the reason I go into frameless and uh, face frame is because with frameless, everything is built no wider than usually about three feet, thirty two inches, three foot wide. And then basically, you're hooking all these boxes together, and the doors have a certain offset off the edge of each cabinet. So as you put them together, it leaves like a quarter inch gap or three sixteenths inch gap or whatever you decide to put in there. Um, and really, all uh, frameless cabinets are, or should be, uh, at least in my experience, should be based on the metric system. Even though we tell people in inches and feet and things like that. And if you get to looking at hinges and drawer glides and re- really the whole conceptual from the beginning of cabinets, um, the whole thing was set up uh, by a man in Germany years ago, and. It basically all goes back to the metric system, and uh, and if you start looking at hinges, they're all based on a 32 millimeter system. Or you look at yeah. a line boards based on a 32 millimeter uh, system in, in, in increments of that. And then, um, it, so if you are going more with a frameless cabinet, basically it's much easier to do the manufacturing type concept because basically, you know, you're you're basically bidding boxes. It doesn't really matter if it's a 30 inch wide cabinet or a a uh, 32 inch wide cabinet it's the wood and the materials are going to be very minimal on the cost difference um it's you're talking really more um the time and, and you basically just count boxes and say this is how many boxes that are going in there and this right. is how much it costs cuz yeah Europeans really love their cabinets like they just hang them and take them with them when they move I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that lock-in system on the wall, and then just take them with them when they go. And it would kind of make sense. The the, ne- the, the negative to the doing it that way or, or, or that uh, type of style is that you go to a house that's not, you know, yeah. if it's 10 foot 6 instead of 10 foot, you've got a 6-inch gap you've got to figure out what to do with or put a filler or all that type of thing. It, well, Jim. Well, uh, well, no, right now it looks like we've got about two minutes left. Uh Corey, are you are you noticing that uh, people are wanting their cabinets a little taller, like the height of people are yes, taller, so they're not um, wanting the standard thirty six? Well, I think uh, basically for years now we've done forty two inch uppers, and uh, basically, are you talking about on bases though? On the, the bases, 36? yeah. Um, well, yeah, because the taller ones they're wanting to take them up too. Sure, I, um, I think as ceilings have gone up, the uppers have gone up in height, and yeah. and that's it. Actually, it looks better. It's more storage. Um, uh, you know, we have a lot of stuff in abundance in the mm-hmm. United States, so I think uh, yes. you know, we need more place to, places to put things. But typically, uh, I think there's more people now that um, raise their cabinets, but there's still not a lot. You're, you occasionally get somebody that's 38 inches or 40 inches. we got to wrap up this week's show. We've got a segment coming up by Kelly M. Davis. It's going to be on oil leases. Uh, I'd like to introduce our guests again. They're Sam Corey and Ken Crooks, and they're with the Advantage Window Systems. And you can see, meet them at... Uh, 
Uh, you can get us at 817-560-8484, or you can get us on the Internet at www.inflectorpanel.com. I'm oh, on .net, excuse me. All right. And then uh, we've got uh, Rodney Bishop with Artistic Cabinets. 817-300-1341. All right, we'll see you next week. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you looking for a law firm with an understanding of the construction industry? Kelly M. Davis & Associates' experience includes home inspections, construction contracts, disputes with builders, and helping subcontractors or vendors that have not been paid for their services. For more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972-434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. Kelly M. Davis and Associates Principal Offices are located in Louisville, Texas. Croft Foam Insulation and Protective Coatings has over 25 years of experience in the spray foam business, serving residential, commercial, and industrial clients. Croft Foam specializes in open and closed cell polyurethane foam applications to construction, refrigerated trailers, and even castles. Croft Foam is a Fort Worth-based company. You may reach them by calling 817-482-1664 or email at foamman at swbell.net. Alamo Appliance, 100 South Riverside Drive in Fort Worth, has been dedicated to serving your needs in kitchen appliances for over 35 years. They offer Gen Air, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and many others. Their experienced sales staff will help you make the right decisions at the right time. That's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Once again, that's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. I want to thank Gibson Home Builders and Jim and Jean Gibson for having me on the show today. My name is Kelly Davis, and I own a local law firm, Kelly M. Davis & Associates. My firm concentrates mostly in construction and real estate law. One of the biggest booms I have seen in the legal field since 1999 when I began practicing is the emergence of substantial legal issues relating to oil and gas. Until recently, buyers and sellers in the normal sales transaction were not concerned with mineral rights. Often, mineral rights have been severed or the value of uh, mineral rights had not been significant. This really has changed with the Barnett Shell uh, being able to be explored in this area recently. We're getting calls weekly on a variety of issues. The questions can be quite complex depending on the individual circumstances. So today what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about some of the issues and some of the questions that my office frequently gets. One of them is that people call and they say that they don't know whether or not they own their mineral rights. What is it that they can do? Many people in Fort Worth own their minerals, especially if they have owned their property for at least five years. Basically, when people started getting smart and started reserving them. Unfortunately, most residential real estate transactions do not specify whether or not you own your minerals. If the contract you signed to purchase your house did not specifically exclude the mineral rights under the property, then most likely, but but not always, um, you were conveyed the mineral rights. There's only one way to really find out whether or not you own the mineral rights, and that's through a title search. This search can either be done by a landman or by an attorney. 
because of how far back the records can go, I mean, we've seen these things going back all the way to the 1800s. It can be very expensive for these searches. The second big question that we get is, how do I know whether or not I am buying mineral rights with my land? The ownership of mineral rights can be a legally complex issue, and many real estate brokers are not generally familiar with the value of mineral rights, nor the specific clauses that may be important for the parties um, of such transactions. The real estate transaction forms promulgated by the Texas Real Estate Commission and the commercial contract forms published by the Texas Association of Realtors provide that the sellers will convey to the buyer all of the seller's rights associated with the property, including mineral rights held by the seller unless there's a specific reservation. So that leads to the third big question. I do want to reserve my mineral rights when I'm selling my property, but I don't know how to do it. The first thing is, is that you need very specific language in the sale disclosure that the sale of land does not include the oil, gas, and mineral rights. So when you put your land up for sale and you're filling out all the forms and the disclosure forms, you have to specifically tell them that you are withholding the mineral rights and reserving it for yourself. The next thing you need is a mineral deed to be signed and filed in order to properly effectuate the transfer. Having the contract is not enough. So if you've disclosed it, when you get down to signing the contract with the potential buyer, the contract needs to say that you are withholding the rights and um, keeping them for yourself. But you need something more than that. You need a mineral deed to be signed. So the mineral deed must have specific contents and language in order for it to be sufficient. There is tons of case law in Texas about this, and basically what they all say is that the language has to be very specific. So what this means is that most realtors aren't going to feel comfortable giving you legal advice about what kind of language is necessary in your deed to properly reserve your mineral rights. Um, the other thing that we see a lot is that the mineral deed, which is most often prepared by a title company, is not done correctly. So I think that the biggest thing is is that you need to have it reviewed independently by an attorney in order to determine whether or not it's sufficient to actually reserve the rights for yourself. The next big question I get is, I have someone knocking on my door wanting me to sign a lease. What do I do? The answer comes in two words, and that is be careful. There's quite a few tips, I think, that might help you when this situation occurs. The first tip is that if an offer is given, make sure it's in writing. Don't sign any contracts or letters without fully understanding the terms of the agreement. A lot of times what happens is that people get contracts from these leasing companies, and they'll come to my office and say, tell me what this means. And at the very least, before they sign the contract, they understand what it is that they're getting it into and what the money's for and how much money they get and what the specific clauses mean that are usually written in a foreign language, I sometimes think. But the second tip is that you can educate yourself about the specific situation by asking the questions of the landman. How many leases does this company have around you? How many rigs do they have available? How many wells have they drilled in the city before? The last thing you really want to do is sign a lease with a company that really is not going to try to produce what is under your land and give you the royalties from it. You, you really just don't want the payment that you get up front. You want royalties. So you're really wanting to sign with a company that is known in the area and that, um, that actually has plans to drill uh, under your property. The third tip is, so remember that you are the owner and in control of your minerals. If you feel that the landman is less than professional in his or her demeanor to you, or if you believe that the, un that the landman has exhibited some unethical behavior, there are many agencies to report this behavior to. Also, it's recommended that your document, you actually document the meetings or phone calls with the landman or have a witness present. The last tip is that it's important that you check out the company presenting you with a lease to sign. I've already had several big lawsuits in which I've represented people who have um, invested money into these particular ventures or 
um, have signed leases with people and they actually are fraudulent companies. Ask whether or not the company is leasing the mineral rights is the company that will actually be drilling or operating the well. Inquire about the experience of the company in the Barnett Shell area. Ask neighbors or other mineral owners and landowners about their experiences or knowledge of the company. And it's important that you know who you're dealing with before you actually enter into a lease. You may research the company's drilling activities in the Barnett Shell through the Railroad Commission of Texas. Nowadays, with the age of Internet, there's really no reason whatsoever that you shouldn't be researching these companies. And and there's many, many websites out there that's devoted to making this easier for you. You can also ask for contact references of other property owners who have dealt with or are currently working with a particular company. If you want to report any complaints to the actions of a landman, then you need to contact the American Association of Professional Landmen, um, and you can look that up on the Internet as well. Their phone number is 817-847-7700, and that's the American Association of Professional Landmen. Next time I'm on the air, I'll be discussing how to protect your assets if you're a small business owner. If you need to contact me, you can call me at 972-434-8009. Otherwise, visit us on the web at www.kmdalegal.com. See you soon. Good-